Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Alexia if you're new here and today I am going to be doing my July wrap up and I read seven books this month in total. Yeah, that is a pretty good amount for me. I'm not a super fast reader. I don't read every single day. I'm not like in a competition with myself to read as many books as possible. I have a goal of 50 books a year right now and I'm like 10 books ahead of schedule. I haven't hit 50 yet, but I am almost there. After this month, I might be there actually. I don't know, let me check. I'm at 42 out of 50, so. I'm 13 books ahead of schedule now. I think by next month I could be done if I read a lot, but we'll see where next month leads us. It was a pretty good reading month for me. I don't think I had anything less than three stars so far, so that's pretty good. Um, it was Summerween this month and I kind of failed miserably at that. I only read one book. I was planning on doing a part two vlog, but I don't even know if I'm gonna do that. I am so fickle when it comes to reading that all the books I have planned, it's not that I don't feel like reading them, it's that I just get other books in front of me and I'm like, I wanna read you. You can wait, even though I was planning on reading them. So yeah, that's kind of how I am with books. I'm very like that day in that moment, if I wanna read it, I'm gonna read it. If I don't, it's hard to force myself to. Anyways, let's get into it. I'm just gonna go in order from the books that I read from the beginning to the end of the month. First book that I read this month was The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchinson. This is a first book in a series called like The Collector. I've never heard of this book. It is kind of like a mystery book about a man who has this place called The Garden and he basically holds women captive and collects them and I think that he like calls them his butterflies. It's been a while. Honestly, when I read this book like the very beginning of the month, that feels like a lifetime ago for some reason. And I gave this book three stars. I thought that it was entertaining. I can't remember any of the characters' names, honestly, but it was kind of forgettable and I think that there was a twist at the end that I kind of missed or something. I don't know. Something about this book just did not do it for me. I gave it three stars because the writing was good and I was entertained while reading it, but I don't really have any like pull or will to read the second one. I feel like it could have been a one and done book, but yeah, it's kind of like an interview format. So you have this woman who has basically gotten out of the butterfly garden and she is being interviewed by the police like asking like her point of view and what happened on things and she has this big secret and she doesn't want to tell them right it was a big secret i can't totally remember it's been a while i gave it three stars i'm kind of thinking 2.5 i feel like people really like this book but i don't know something about it to me was just like mm, it was okay but it was kind of forgettable i can't remember anything about it really so let's move on to the next book so the next one is the first book in the mindfuck series by st abby which is called the risk i am halfway through about book two i kind of put a hold on that for summer ween and i had like a lot going on i've been really busy but i am going to continue that series it's going to take me a while because you have to read it with your eyes only there is no audiobook and if you've watched any of my book videos you probably know that i really enjoy audiobooks and reading along with them. I give this book three stars. It is following a woman named, what is her name again? Laura? Lana. <laughs> it's following a woman named Lana, and I'm not gonna give any spoilers for any of the books away. This is not a spoiler. She is a serial killer, getting revenge on people who did her wrong, I believe men only. Um, that's not really a spoiler. It's kind of like the setup. And then there is a man named Logan and he is an FBI agent looking for a serial killer, her to be exact, but he doesn't realize it. They meet, she realizes it and the relationship forms. So it's kind of just a whole series um, about her getting her revenge and him looking for the serial killer, which is her. But he, she's not his only case. There's other cases too. But yeah, it, it was kind of cheesy in the first one, not gonna lie, but it was good. It was entertaining. I'm on book two. I want to finish. I want to continue. I'm hoping it gets better. I've heard a lot of people say like from book one and two on, it gets even better. And they're not very long. They're like 120 pages on average, each of them. I don't feel like grabbing it, but it's like a pretty big book. You can kind of see it behind me. 
that is the book behind me on the table. Um, it is all five books in one. So I think a total, it's like 700 pages, but it's five books. So they're not too, too long each for each one. So you can read one pretty quick and you feel like, oh, I accomplished something. I read a book. So yeah, I gave it three stars. I really liked it and I want to continue. The writing is not amazing. It's not amazing. It's not like a novel, but you know, it's, it's entertaining. That's why I read to be entertained. I don't like books that make me feel dumb anyways. And some of those like classics make me feel kind of dumb. <laughs> Next up, we have the thriller in my dreams. I hold a knife. I believe this is by Ashley Winstead. I gave this a 3.5 stars. To summarize the book, it is about a group of friends that all went to college together in 2009. I think they graduate in 2009. I can't remember. I know in 2009 they were in college though. And one of the friends of the friend group dies. So I'm not going to spoil anything. It's basically they're going to their re college reunion and things come out. It's like who actually did it? Someone got blamed for the murder back then, but we're not totally sure if it was actually them or not. It can, it, everyone suspects it was someone in the friend group. So that's kind of what it is. Secrets being revealed, relationships. It's a mess. It's drama filled. It was really entertaining. I liked it. I enjoyed reading it. It had a lot of twists towards the end like the author would lead you one way and then you'd be like okay that's definitely the way the book is going and then another way and you'd be like okay I thought it was that but now I think it's this so if you like twisty thrillers that take you on twists and turns I think you will enjoy this I thought the writing was really good the trope of like going back with a big group of friends I you know, I kind of like that trope. Sometimes there's too many characters though. This one did have quite a few characters, but I never felt confused as to who we were being told about in that moment. But yeah, it was thoroughly enjoyable and um, 3.5 stars for me. Next up we have Blood Sugar, which is categorized as a thriller. I gave it four stars. I'm gonna have to say this. I don't think it's a thriller at all. There's no reveals that I can remember. Yeah, there's like no reveals. There's no like crazy plot twists, nothing like that. It's a thrilling subject matter, but it's not for the thrill of things. You're not reading the book to be like shocked or whatever. It's more of what I've heard other people call it is like a character study of the main character. So if you don't know, this is a book about a woman who is married, happily married, loves her husband. He has type one diabetes. She has killed before, I think three people. This is not a spoiler. She has killed three people and her husband has died and she is being accused of murdering him. So it's kind of a character study about who this woman is, why she is the way she is, why she does the things she does, her relationship with herself, her relationship with other people and her relationship with her husband. And I thought that it was intriguing and interesting. At moments it did get a little, not slow, but it was kind of like you're going on this long meandering journey of a woman, like a part of a woman's life. And you're also getting backstory of her, but there is no crazy twists or turns. There's no like crazy reveals. There's no like, oh my God, did that just happen moments? Nothing like that. So if you're going into it expecting a crazy thriller like that, it's not like that at all. It is interesting though. It held my attention and I gave it four stars. I thought it was entertaining and I really enjoyed being in the mind of the main character. Next, I read The Last House on Needless Street. This is in my Winterween reading vlog. It is the only book that I have for my reading vlog, and I titled that part one, but I don't know if I'm gonna do a part two because it's already June, basically. So I started a little late anyways, and I was just trying to get it out, but better luck next time I'm saying back to the last house on needless street I gave this four stars I thought that it was really good I thought it was really good similar to blood sugar this is categorized as one thing but I don't necessarily agree with it it's categorized as a horror because I don't know what else you would categorize it as it is written in 
a creepy weird way where the entire book literally the entire book you don't know what's going on you don't know who to trust you don't know who's the good guy you don't know who's the bad guy you don't know if there is really just a good guy and a bad guy you don't understand you don't you just don't understand most of it so if you don't want to read a book where you are absolutely confused and possibly even confused at the end then don't don't read this book also don't read this book while sleepy. I read this book and not because it's boring. This is just a me thing. I fall asleep even if I'm loving the book. Like if I'm just sitting there reading it, I will fall asleep. Like don't know what it is. It's very annoying. That's another reason I really like audiobooks because I'm usually doing something like coloring or cleaning or driving. So I will stay awake for the book. So that's just another little tangent. But let me give a little summation of what this book is about. This book is about Ted, a man who lives in a the last house on Mila Street. And he lives with his daughter, Laura, I believe. And he lives with his cat, Olivia. I think that's their names. And that is like the big part of the story, like the main part of the story. But we have another plot of a story where there is um, a girl who went missing at the beach or the lake near Ted's house when he was younger. Um, and she has never been found. She disappeared. It's assumed she's dead. And Ted was basically a suspect. So that's where the story starts off. That's all I want to give away because the story is not what you think it's about. It's not necessarily about that. I mean, you get the answers. You get all of the answers for the plot that I just told you, but the heart of the story is more about grief and trauma and coping with grief and trauma and abuse. It's just, it's a really beautiful story wrapped up in a creepy little confusing bow. And I really, really liked it. I want to read it again now that I understand everything that's going on. And I even had to watch some spoiler reviews after I finished because I, I felt like I understood what happened, but there were things that I missed. And not because the writing is so confusing, but it just went over my head or something. But then after I did that, I, I watched the reviews with spoilers. I was like, oh my God. I honestly, in my mind, the twist that I missed, I didn't miss it. I vividly remember reading it, but it didn't click. After watching the spoiler reviews, I was just like blown away, blown away. I want to read it again. I really liked the book and you're gonna go into it reading and you're probably gonna feel like you figured the book out, but there is more to be unveiled under all the little layers of the book than just the main plot that you think is only the main plot. Like there, I would say there's like three or four storylines within this story and they all are uncovered and exposed towards the end. It's very, it's a very good book and it was well put together. The writing is odd and I loved it, really liked it. So yeah, I gave it four stars. Okay, next up is I don't read romance that much. I don't read romance that much, but I took a little nosedive into some romance, two books to be exact, um, by the same author. I just got sucked in. I keep hearing everyone talking about this book series now saying it's so, 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 so good and you have to read it. So that was It Happened One Summer by, is it Chloe Bailey? Tessa Bailey. <laughs> it Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey and Hook, Line, and Sinker, which is the second one in the series, also by Tessa Bailey. I gave them both four stars. They were really enjoyable, cute, loving. You read them and you're like, mm, I want to love like that. I want that. I just want to feel... The book felt like a hug from a big, strong man. And that's, <laughs> that's what they felt like. I do have some critiques of it though. It happened one summer. I, it was like kind of hate to love, like dislike to love. Um, so let me just give you a little synopsis. It's about Piper. She basically is a socialite, super, super rich. Think like Paris Hilton, I guess, kind of like vapid. And I think this was based off of one of the characters from Schitt's Creek, but I never watched that show. So that actually made me not want to read this because I actually, I've watched one episode and I just didn't think it was that entertaining or funny. And I was like, is this going to be like that? I didn't get those vibes from it at all. Schitt's Creek is like oddball humor. This was not 
oddball humor or whatever. Um, she's an heiress, super, super rich, super wealthy, super, like, she's kind of famous. And um, she gets into a little trouble. And her stepdad sends her away to this fishing town where her biological father used to be a fisherman and he passed away. And there is like a bar with a apartment on top of it, I believe, that she owns. So her and her sister go there and he's like, you need to learn basically how to be humbled and learn what working is and the value of money and how to treat people and just how to be a better person because I spoiled you so much that you are just not that great of a person. You're self-centered and you think that money grows on trees. So that is the setup and she needs a man named Brendan. I believe it's Brendan, right? Yeah, Brendan. I felt like the author said it different, like Brennan or Brandon. It's Brendan. He is a fisherman there in that town. And yeah, it's like a love story between them two and they're total opposites. But some of the things that bother me about it, it was a little insta love. Honestly, it felt like they met and did not like each other at all because they were just so different. And then it felt like three or four pages later, they were like pining over each other heavily, like just thinking in their brain about how much they liked them. And I was kind of like, didn't you guys really dislike each other a few pages ago? I don't understand how all of a sudden it was so quick that y'all are just like, oh my God, I'm infatuated. So once you get past that and they have been kind of into each other for a while it's pretty good i really liked how uh piper's character does like a 180 she grows as a person she becomes a nicer person and she also sees the value within herself uh more than just like looking pretty and taking photos for instagram and stuff like that and i also really liked brendan because i do feel like he <laughs> I just feel like some of the men in these books are so unrealistic because he was just like, he seemed like the perfect man, honestly. <laughs> like he understood her feelings and her emotions and he was so caring and he would just like, I would run to the end of the earth for you, baby girl. And you're just like, do men do that? I don't know. Do they? Do men really do that that often? It just feels a little bit too like men don't act like Prince Charming, but maybe that's the point of romance and they're not supposed to be super realistic and like an escape. But honestly, I was reading it and it just made me a little bit sad that love isn't more like that. Maybe just because it was the beginning phase of their relationship. I don't know. I thought it was cute overall. Another critique that I have though is ugh, the sex scenes. I'm new to romance, so maybe this is just like a thing, but they were so cringy to me. So cringy. I got like secondhand embarrassment every time and there were a lot, there were a lot. There were like five or six like on page sex scenes, descriptive, like talking dirty and the thing that i hate the most is tessa bailey loves to call like a, a penis or a vagina their sex like oh brendan rubbed her sex and i'm like what does that mean that okay sorry about that this is a different background different setting because my camera died and my phone i there's the tripod i don't have like a tripod thing for my phone right now. So you're on my bookshelves right now, leaning up against some books. So I had to change the whole scenario. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Tessa Bailey calls genitals their sex. Like, oh, Brendan rubbed her sex. She rubbed her sex. He rubbed his sex, whatever. It's so cringy. Why are you calling it sex? That's not definitely not the only word that she used to describe it, but that was the cringiest of all. Anyways, next up, I read Hook, Line, and Sinker. I also gave this one four stars. I thought it was super cute, and I really liked the development of the relationship a lot more. This book is following Piper's sister, Hannah, and Fox, which is one of Brendan's co-workers and, like, friends like they grew up together in the town and whatever so it is following them and the thing in the first book that you know in romances there always has to be like an issue like why can't they be together in the first one it was like 
well, I'm from LA and I'm not going to be living here for forever. And you're a fisherman and you go out on the boat and like, whatever. So that was their issue. The second one, their little issue of being together is he's like a, a whore <laughs> basically. And she's not as like preppy as Piper or whatever, you know, she's a little bit more, I'll live in Portland or I think Portland was the town that was around. I'm more willing to move and stuff. Their issue was more within him and he felt like he could not be in a relationship because he felt like he didn't know how to be. I thought that was kind of a weak and weird excuse. So basically he kind of grew up being told that he's only good for one thing because his dad slept around a lot and they were like, yeah, you're going to be just like your dad and you're going to sleep around a lot and you're just never going to have a girlfriend. And he really committed to that even as he got older and they're in their like late mid to late twenties. And he was still committed to that. Like, Oh, I couldn't possibly do anything else. Even though I want a relationship, I want to be with someone but I couldn't possibly do that because everyone has pinned me as like the town whore. <laughs> I just sleep with everyone. And I, even though I kind of want to see what a relationship would be like, I don't think that I would ever be able to commit, even though it's something that I want. And I'm just kind of like, if you want to do something, then you want to do it. Like there's no, you just try it out, you know? I, that was like one of my only critiques of it. Also the sex scenes, there were less of them way way less and that's what i liked better about this one is you know this one might be like a 4.5 i don't know i liked them equally but i liked their relationship like development a lot better because it literally the first book is when they met and they were kind of just like friendly in that book they were there was not like a relationship there was like little hints that they could maybe find each other attractive but everyone was like be careful girl Hannah, don't get messed with, involved with him because he is just gonna hurt you and break your heart. And in the second one, it was kind of like she was going there to work on a movie because she's like into music and whatever and she was helping with the movie. And um, they had been like texting on and off for a few months as friends, mostly as friends. Like i'm guessing there you know there was like little flirting and stuff here and there but it was nothing like over the top or anything they were actually just friends so she stays with him in his extra bedroom while she's there working and you know things develop but i really liked that it took almost until the end of the book before they had sex before they really like realized that they liked each other a lot. I feel like that's not a spoiler for romance because like, what's the point of a romance if they're not getting together in the end, you know? I don't think that's a spoiler, but it took the whole book of them working things out and figuring out that they actually liked each other and wanted to be together. And I really, really enjoyed that a lot about it. So I'm gonna say this one's like a 4.2 because I think it's a little bit better than the original, even though I did really like the original. So it makes me kind of want to try some more romances out, even though romances were not really my thing, but maybe it's just like I thought that I wouldn't like them. It is still June right now. It's the last day, second to last day, or July, not June. <laughs> It's like the last day of July, it's almost August, and I am halfway through Comfort Me With Apples, which if you know, it's only a two hour audiobook basically. So I wanted to film this and then I'm gonna go pick up food and I am going to listen to the rest of that book and I will be back in like half a second for you guys, but I'm gonna finish that book and it's gonna be counted on my July books because it is still July. It's July 30th. I'll be back in a second for the next book, which is going to be Comfort Me With Apples. And I am back. So I finished lunch and I finished Comfort Me With Apples. That book was so good. Oh my gosh. I freaking loved it. Five stars. Definitely five stars. So, so good. I went into it knowing nothing at all about it. Didn't know any setup at all. And, and I honestly am glad that I went in knowing nothing at all because it made it so much better. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what I was getting into. I had no idea of any of it, but it was so good. Okay, let me try to think of a little way 
to kind of explain the plot without giving away too much. So it is about a woman and she is married and lives in this perfect neighborhood with perfect neighbors and just this perfect life. And Comfort Me With Apples is a horror novella. It's only like a hundred something pages. I believe it was a two hour audiobook and I got it done within like, I guess an hour and 25 to 30 minutes. Yeah, it's about a woman who lives in this neighborhood. Everything is perfect, 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 perfect. And the homes are described as like, they can be painted white and they can only be painted these colors like heavenly or mother's milk or angel white i don't know stuff like that and the setup of the book it's it's so short but it's like a slow burn and the setup of the book is like a uh, normal novel storytelling chapters and then every now and then they'll have the hoa rules the first chapter is the hoa rules for the neighborhood that they live in and as they go on throughout the story they get a little bit more controlling and like what the hell is going on who would agree to live in a hoa like this and i don't want to give anything away about what it is because it was so good oh my gosh five stars i loved it i loved the themes i loved what it was talking about and it's just so odd but the themes in this oh, of how men control women and men control women's bodies it was just i just loved the theme of how men control women and how when women serve no use to men they just throw them to the side or leave them or cheat on them or whatever you know like once you don't serve your purpose to me anymore or live for me anymore then you're gone bye and i really enjoyed the like commentary of how women in our society have been treated basically since the dawn of time it was so good it was just so good five stars for sure so good i'm so glad i read that and uh yeah that was my only five star book this month it was super weird super odd and it was so good you know it was really good and yeah that's the eight books i think eight books that I read this month. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below all the books that you read in July and if they were good or if they were doozies. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. If you've read any of these books, also let me know and let me know what you thought on any of them. It's totally okay if we have a different opinion. I will not get my feelings hurt. But yeah, I think that is it. So I will see you guys in the next one.